This is Holly Hutchison, and you're listening to Jim and Mike Talk Music. We've got a special guest with us today. She has over 34 years of experience in the music and entertainment industry and was an early champion for such artists as Skid Row, Deftones, Alanis Morissette, Blink-182, and many others. She continues to discover and champion for new artists with her own a r company called a r Girl. So let's all welcome to Jim and Mike Talk Music, Holly Hutchinson. <laughs> Listen to the crowd. <laughs> Calm down, calm down. So how are you doing today? <laughs> Anything exciting today or this week? Um, never Always. a dull moment here. Oh, okay. <laughs> never a dull moment. So where are you? Where are you living? Um, I'm in Easton, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. okay. Downtown Easton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're in Washington, yeah. New Jersey. Yeah, Washington. not the big, not the big Washington. No. Yeah. Close oh, by. okay. Is it that, that's by Asbury, isn't it? Washington is between Phillipsburg and Hackettstown. She means the little Asbury. Oh, yeah. that little, that yeah, little. Of yeah, not Asbury Park. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Yeah, off of 31. All wow. three of us have something in common, which you probably already mm-hmm. know. Yeah. And we all graduated mm-hmm. from the same high school in Phillipsburg, mm-hmm. a little town. Yes, we did. Phillipsburg. We won't say the year. Don't need so. to. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. when we talk about music, we might, uh, might be yeah. alluding to that. Uh, yeah, so Jim and I, uh, you know, thinking back to the mid '80s, and shortly after, you know, we we kind of went from hard rock to uh, a little punk, and then new wave, and just uh, you know, U uh, two, REM, and all the uh, all the a uh, little bit of goth, goth girlfriends, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just wondering, um, just thinking back to to then. Uh, so I'm not taking you back to uh, the early early years, but uh, what what were you listening to then? What were some of the things you were into oh. just, just post high school? Uh, oh, um, right, you know, right out of high school. Yeah, so well, I was um, those young adult years. Okay, <laughs> young adult years. <laughs> well, I was I I started doing my internship at Airport Music Hall um, okay. after I met Skid Row, but Skid mm-hmm. Row didn't have Sebastian when I met them. So at that point, I'm listening to Slip When Wet, Bon Jovi, and mm-hmm. starting to get into a little more metal. I got my internship at airport music hall it had a lot of cool bands coming in there like ECO yeah, yeah i saw um, um, the ramones there yeah and, and heard, the replacements yeah that, yeah that show just that side yeah. note there on airport music hall for some of our listeners who can't imagine what kind of madness that was <laughs> you, you i just just gotta allude to that because you know that was the place where uh you could it wasn't under 21 it was over and under and those who are over 21 can drink and get banded with the, their wrist banded. And then you just party all night. It was, it was pretty, it was, it was a one of a kind animal really was. Uh, and everybody. Was that punk band? They, there was some crazy punk band. They had cherry bombs or some oh, really? crazy bombs go off in the back. <laughs> wow. I remember there yeah. was a, there was a loft area. In yeah, the, back. the balcony was, I so want to cool. say it was made out of yeah. metal or. Yeah. I was up there when the punk band played. To be were you there for the so. uh, replacements and Ramones that show? I don't know what year that was. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't remember going to that one. I mean, I was only there. Like... Let's see, eighty seven. I started going, and I graduated in eighty spring of eighty nine, yeah. and yeah. then I went to Los Angeles. I think yeah. it was around that time, though. Yeah, yeah. It might have been. 80, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking eighty eight. Yeah, yeah. eighty nine. So we could have had some diverse musical interest and uh, and styles, but uh, still, the airport music. Yeah, but hall, I would have the... been at the re- I would have been at <laughs> right. the replacement stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, like I was uh, there if like King Diamond was there. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, the yeah. harder. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> when we when we went to concerts, we would go see bands that were already established, you know, Mm -hmm. that would have albums out Mm -hmm. and hit songs. We never saw a band that, you know, a small band that went on to become huge. And you mentioned Skid Row, and I want to talk a little bit about that. And 
I assume maybe you started out as a fan, but I wanted to know if you, how you were involved with them, if you even managed them. I know you were, you were involved with them before Sebastian Bach joined. Yeah, so I would say a little bit more, more as a friend, okay. a friend and not, is it, as soon as you say fan, like they're, they're a lot of the inspiration of why I went into the music business. Okay. Not mm-hmm. the music fandom. Yeah, um, right. I was already mm-hmm. a fan of music from the time I was really small. Yeah. So um, right. I had my dad was in bands when he was younger. So mm-hmm. I, I grew okay. up with somebody always singing around the house. So, yeah, when when I met them, I, I was actually studying for a Spanish exam at Moravian College. And um, we were looking for John Bon Jovi and we came across <laughs> Skid Row and we made friends with them. They were so nice. And uh, the drummer, Rob Afuso, the original drummer, was um, studying NYU. And mm-hmm. I remember thinking, wow, this guy is going to NYU and, and he's in the music business. So you know what? You could be in the music business and have a career and, and, and a degree. Yeah, yeah. Because you never knew what, what artists did besides be artists. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that kind of started it. And from there, that, that inspired me to go find my internship at the airport music hall. Okay. So I went there and I started helping them promote upcoming shows and flyers okay. and, and scout out bring in there that maybe they weren't touching upon. Right. So at a college age, you were thinking, uh, hey, I could get into this business. That's advanced Yeah, thinking. so much That's so that good. I changed. Yeah, I changed from being a pre-law into a communications major, what pretty mm-hmm. much is a double major in communications mm-hmm. and business. And I had to write something for the for the dean, like a rationale for the head dean at Moravian, um, get approved to create this uh, curriculum that I made up myself of classes they had there. Of course, they oh. approved and commended and said, go get it. And yeah, yeah, that was the start of it. And hence the uh, internship. And so, yeah, I was wondering when you said the term internship, uh, you know, that would come through a, a college and that was through Moravian then. Yeah, so I if, got it myself, yeah. but I, I, yeah. I applied it to them. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, you, I wanted you did, you did the legwork. Like, yeah. This is a business where you have to be on, you have to have a lot of gumption to do this. Nothing gets handed to you. Mm, Unless we're right. born to the president of a record company. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. From there, where did you go? Like, I know, how did you get to be with Atlantic Records and Capitol Records? Was there anything in between that as far as promoting bands or? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, with uh, Skid Row, you know, I booked them at Airport Music Hall and they came, you know, they came in to do their show. You know, you may have heard this because this is pretty much my background and the start of it mm-hmm. is Tom and Erd again from Atlantic Records was somebody that I always admired, was iconic to me. My mm-hmm. Led Zeppelin albums all had Atlantic labels on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, when I booked Skid Row and I heard that I got word there was a snowstorm that was happening and I thought, oh, who's really going to come? This is a bummer. My first big show. And then Pat, who was running Airport Music Hall, said to me, hey, it doesn't matter. Ahmed Erdogan is coming in on a helicopter in a snowstorm. <laughs> yeah. and I was like, OK. And for me, that kind of started. I've always been a fan more of the executives in the business. And it's kind of like a lot of people who follow baseball. I would collect mm-hmm. articles on people that influenced me or made an impression on me in the music mm-hmm. business and what they did and what, what their backgrounds were. And it kind of made me say, okay, I can do this too. So that was the beginning. And then from there, I'm um, staying at a, a airport music hall. I met uh, a few people that led me to concrete marketing and management who everybody knows from foundations forum. They were the, the hugest metal marketing agency mm-hmm. uh, independently in, in the, uh, in the music industry in the 80s, they were the 80s metal. I was so excited to get a internship there. So I'd be going to Moravian, full-time classes, you know, going there on a bus for a Thursday in and out. You know, it's like two hours from Bethlehem on a bus, mm-hmm. doing my homework on the way back, working in a factory part-time to pay for things. And then at the airport music hall, on the weekend. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, for anybody yeah. that's listening, it's not a party. Uh, yeah. It's not like mm-hmm. I'm just going to be a party with the band and get there. The MTV had bangers ball charts for a while while I was interning in New York City. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and from there, I learned how to do retail marketing, tour marketing, and graduated, went to 
California with two suitcases and $1,200 and two people mm. that I knew out there and <laughs> wow. um, landed a retail marketing job as my first child there. Now back with, uh, I just had, was, as you were talking, I was thinking about college. And so, you know, when I went to college for social work, you've got all your, your fellow people around, you've got, you know, who are challenging you, of course, in social work, lots of challenging issues. There's a lot of things of the day. You were more, uh, a, you were a little bit more alone in what you were doing. There wasn't others around you traveling on the bus. You know what I'm saying? You were, you were out cutting the path more alone. Is that, is that right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, because there's Very other alone. majors. Let's say, <laughs> let's say, let's say nursing, uh, social work, uh, maybe some, uh, some, uh, some business and such. Uh, yeah, you were. You, it sounds like you were really, uh, you know, alone cutting that path, doing those things that you just mentioned minutes ago. Yeah. And you know what really inspired me was working at a factory, and it was it was in um, Lopatcon, on Lascos owned it, Superior Courts, yeah. and my mom worked there. And she got me the job. And I would be in the back working and there would be this one older lady. I had my, my um, rock pictures hanging up around my little station and she would say, well, what are you going to do? And I said, oh, I'm going to be in the music business. I'm going to go to L.A. I'm going to do all, all this. And she was like, no, you're going to be like the rest of us. You're just going to work at a fact. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And I was like, oh, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> right and my mom and dad yeah. allow that with a, yeah and that sounds like a scene out of a movie you know just uh, no 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 you know telling the uh the older <laughs> woman who says you're gonna be here with us yep yeah we know you yeah. know i know you i know your mom and dad i know where you're gonna i can picture you th you know decades from now yeah that's that's that is excellent you know taking and i wanted to share that with you because we're all from the same area and a lot of mm -hmm. people right. that might listen to your show locally would mm -hmm. would understand that feeling you know right like, right so yeah. let me take you, let me take let me take you back get to that. out <laughs> right right let me take you back to that age uh i don't know who the guidance counselors were or what they did but i didn't know you could be into music business i didn't know you could be a bicycle repairman okay i i used to find parts of bicycles and build my own i mean we used to do that in pohat kong uh you know <laughs> uh how we got them was legal but it was uh, finding them along the streets uh, and, and just building. And I had no idea that I could actually, and I see people doing that there. They have their bike shops, their bicycle shops. I'm not talking about motorcycles, mm -hmm. their, their bicycle shops. Mm -hmm. And, and I had no idea when we were coming out, trying to get some guidance, Hey, you could be a, you could be, you could own a shop and a, a bike shop and, and, and sell and, and repair and, and main, maintain vehicles, bicycles. I had no idea. There's so many things that, that weren't open to us like that. Yeah. It's that's uh, so people do know who are about our age. They they know uh, what you're talking about. <laughs> if you didn't yeah, forge absolutely. it yourself, you would you would be here. You would. There was no curriculum at Moravian for that. They'd have yeah. music mm -hmm. business division or anything. I, that's yeah. why I had to write rationale to explain what I was going to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, take, that takes guts. My mom Definitely. didn't know what I was going to do. My mom's like, what are you doing? You don't sing. And then mm -hmm. my dad said, no, I, I get it. Cause my dad, mm -hmm. you know, e even on a local level, they had agents that they dealt with. They did go cut a record in New York. So he knew a lot more about it than my mom. And he was like, oh, that's what she's going to do. So your and dad that's understood. Very important. Oh, that was so oh, important yeah. too. My dad said that mm -hmm. to me. He said, you know, go, don't ever not, not try something because you are afraid. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. know you always have a place to land here. I'd rather you try and, and give it your all without fear than to never have taken the chance. Yeah, it's inspiring. And I think we need to inspire the next generation and, and so forth with that. I remember telling my mother that I was going to quit my job. It was wearing on my mental health. I was about 20 and working in a factory. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of stuff going down in just, uh, just across the border in New Jersey there. And uh, mm -hmm. and they supported me and understood the, the two week notice was holy, you know, <laughs> and it still is. I still, you know, when I would uh, uh, guide people with their vocation, uh, and I did that work for a while. Uh, yes, two week notice mm -hmm. is, is good, but but what's more important, uh, having a nervous breakdown or or setting things right and going the way you need to go, you know. So it's, the support of your mm -hmm. parents is very it's very important. Oh yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great that yeah. you had uh, parents who can say, uh, yeah, follow your passion. It is funny too. The funny side note is, my dad when they went in on for something and they didn't have a manager or somebody like me in their corner to be 
be the advocate and explain what they were doing. They just got an opportunity through a friend of a friend or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then they go and they try out. Uh, they they went. He said his, they went to the basement bar of this place in New York City to meet with this lady. And he said she was kind of drunk and yeah. had lipstick all over her face. And he said they couldn't take her serious. He was like, this is something out of a movie. Yeah. And but they went upstairs. So they, they kind of met with her to take it serious. They went upstairs. And they were auditioning to, to be a band for a bar or some nightclub in New York City. Mm-hmm. And they go upstairs and little did he know he, he was meeting Joe Pesci and, <laughs> and and the band that he was with. And the next thing you know, he was the investor of the Peppermint Lounge. It was a huge, I mean, our, our era wouldn't know what it was, but our parents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, they came on, you know, they did those variety shows and mm-hmm. they did live from the Peppermint Lounge, the Peppermint Twist and that mm-hmm. band. And mm-hmm. my dad was supposed to be that band. So he was like doing his schoolwork yeah. and his guitar player calls him up and he goes, because they were in college. And he says, do you know what's happening? That was supposed to be us. <laughs> <laughs> and so what you're saying is they, they could use a representative, someone to to be there. Uh, like you, he said, saying. if yeah. if it had if we had had somebody like you to explain to us what we were doing mm-hmm. and who yeah. that was and what all the pieces meant, we would have taken it more seriously. Right, right. And we didn't have somebody like that. Yeah, the band, the band's writing, they're they're performing, they're looking for the gig, and without that person to interpret uh, the per, the people with the band, the people with the ambition, and then the drunk lady. You know, okay, because so, you know, as a as as a liaison right right there, as the person that you are representing, you can say, okay, this woman is is drunk. She's got lipstick all over. Who are we supposed to talk to? Or the next day, you know, or that kind of thing. You know, working out the next steps. Yeah, yeah. Or tell them who she is, and she may be drunk, but it's worth her while. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is yeah, not just. This is not just a drunk lady. This, yes, treat her like your auntie or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. right. Just charm yeah. her. Get the gig. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Give her a smoke. Yeah, she wants another smoke. Yeah, give it to her. <laughs> anything. Well, not anything, but well, okay, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that's another. That's another interview. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about some of the artists you helped discover, like Blink One Eighty Two, Alanis Morissette, Muse. Tell us how you got involved with them. Was it, were you working directly with Atlantic or Capitol Records? How, how did that come about? And when I say discover, did you actually go out and see these bands and yeah. promote? Yeah, there's short oh, stories okay. between all of them. Okay. There's story, and I'll try to keep them brief because there's yeah, a lot you, of involvement. And you can pick and choose what you want to talk about there. I mean, for instance, Blink-182, I had been promoted um, from being an A&R assistant to an A&R research person, Doug Morris, who was running Atlantic Records at the time, came upon an idea of finding artists that were, were doing things regionally with radio and retail, the way that he worked and promoted their signed artists. So it was called A&R Research, and he mm-hmm. wanted somebody to coast. So I had started out working under Kevin Williamson and Jason Flom in the A&R department as assistant in uh, Los Angeles. And Jolene Cherry, who had been working on some big soundtracks for Atlantic, was given her own division. She worked on soundtracks like Batman for is uh, Batman Forever, The Crow. She worked on the Led Zeppelin tribute album, Encomium. She had met through that. And, and so she said, you know what, I'd like to have that person working out of my office. And Doug promoted me to, to you know, do that. So as I'm looking through different um, marketplaces, I come across, you know, I call record stores up and they, they usually don't want to talk to label people. When, but mm-hmm. when someone's calling saying, tell me about your greatest local artist, they get to have a little bit of ownership, too. It's not, right. mm-hmm. hey, can you report this to SoundScan for billboard or whatever? So um, Blink-182 was doing great. They, they, they were on the charts at a lot of the San Diego go area stores as an indie so they had an independent release out but it wasn't anything big so i said what's going on with these kids and i i got a hold of their manager i went to see them up at lake i think it was lake arrowhead they were doing some kind of snowboard festival so me and a, a couple um, from my office went with me I, I had our intern with us and and um leslie reed was with me she was she was my cohort in a and 
it was so funny. Those guys said, hey, what are you doing before the show? Uh, let's get some Mexican food. And well, before that, I said, well, come meet us over. We're staying at this hotel, blah, blah, blah. So they came over there to meet up with us. We had this like room with a suite and we were talking with them, getting to know them. And Tom starts telling this funny story going, hey, this is one of those hotels where I bet if you pull them, pick the mattress up, there's some old lady pink underwear like a horror movie or something mm -hmm. yeah. see these guys were like this from the beginning mm -hmm. i mean he was like 18 years old when i met him oh wow and or 17 you know and, and mark was like 19 or 20 and then they had this other drummer not travis uh mm -hmm. i can't remember the guy's name right now but he was like 15 <laughs> wow. so i go okay well for shits and giggles lift up the mattress i gotta see this now <laughs> so they lift up the mattress and there were pink granny underwear wow <laughs> they probably put them on, maybe they put them under there Too no, they, they didn't know what we were saying they didn't um, yeah, know. yeah yeah wow I was cracking up and i i had a call down the front desk right away and go like what kind of place is this and why mm -hmm. didn't you have this why is it you're not clean under your <laughs> but anyway that started it and then for those two years they were coming up to my office i was taking them to lunch and this is the this is the not so fun part of AR. So you, mm -hmm. you're looking for bands and everything, and you find something that's happening. And they're just growing and growing. They're selling out places in San mm -hmm. Diego. They're moving up the coastline into the riverside, you know, coming closer to LA. And over this time period, and your bosses are going, I don't hear a hit. I don't uh, hear a yeah, hit. Right, hear right. A hit. Oh. <laughs> and you're like, what's and, there to get? This and you did going nuts. Yeah, and you did say two years in that last sentence. You said over years, right? I mean, this takes time. It was almost two years till they got yeah. two years with that. MCA yeah. because my bosses passed. Mm -hmm. They ultimately passed. That was that. But you know, after I after that, when I would see them out, they would come over. I'd go to one of their shows or something. Even when Tom was doing Angels and Airwaves, he would grab me and he, I've seen you in forever. He'd start mm -hmm. to drag yeah. me around and meet everybody backstage. This is my first A and R person. Blah blah blah. <laughs> that's so cool. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. They didn't. They didn't forget. They didn't. Forget. Yeah. And thinking of Blink eighty two, just thinking about eighty two. Blink one eighty two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of the Black Eyed Peas uh, issue, but that's another story. So yeah, Blink one eighty two. Yeah, just uh, there's not hits that like Alanis Morissette and some other. You know, it's you know you said looking for a hit. A band can go forward without getting this radio airplay across the U.S. Hits as big as you know ones that uh, get played oh, overplayed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, well, Blink One Eight Two was pretty big, but you yeah, know, I mean, what, at that point, yeah, but, they got. They but got I understand when you're with show. when you're with someone on a record label for two years and they aren't producing, you know, a hit. Yeah. They could just let you go that and you're back to yeah. doing what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, I mean, they would just make sure we're clear. They weren't on my label. I tried to sign oh, okay. them to the label. Oh, okay. And okay. they, yeah. that's what it means when you say they passed on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. They yeah. Sign okay. It, and mm -hmm. they went to MCA then. Oh, but yeah. then my bosses all wow. felt stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Later. Yeah. <laughs> Shortly after. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And our thing is, it's ninety eight point five percent no. The same thing happened with Alanis Morissette. I was hanging out with her with a mutual friend. She was writing for MCA Publishing. Um, my friend who was working at MCA Publishing introduced us. I was an assistant at the time. I hadn't become an A and R person yet. She said, "Oh, I want you to be my A and R person because we really hit it off that night, and I liked her music and everything." I said, "Well, you know, me being, you know." The honest person that I am. Well, you know, I can't really sign you, but I can help mm -hmm. you. And yeah. I can't, I got to tell you something. I must have been the only person in AR that did that because other AR assistants would say, Oh, yeah, I can set up oh, a meeting wow. and get you a deal. I was never that person. I never, yeah. I was always super honest. I didn't oversell mm -hmm. myself, right, right. who I am and what I could do. I took it in and I, I played it. Uh, what she was writing with Glenn Ballard and it wasn't produced yet, but it was their early writing records. But the songs from her Jagged Little Pill album were on there. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember my boss, and I'm not going to say his name because he already <laughs> said that that was a big mistake, <laughs> said, I don't hear any hits on here. Wow. wow. Mm. That was a huge album. Yeah, yeah. it was. <laughs> and then when the song came out, you know, You Ought to Know was all fully produced and came out, was a huge hit. 
Yeah. Um, I was working with Jolene at that point, been promoted over with her. And she took a meeting and was playing the song and I hadn't even heard it yet. Somebody was playing it early for her that she was friends with the producer mm -hmm. or something. And I came into her office and I was like, oh my What's God, this? <laughs> that's Atlantis? Uh, whoa. <laughs> I can't believe this is where the demos went. <laughs> yeah, so 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 you're saying uh, like you ought to know got powerful and 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 yeah, more powerful with the production and everything. Oh, is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No doubt, no doubt. But I think, you know, this has been, Kind of my forte is hearing things early where a lot of people need a little more. Mm -hmm. I kind of can see it, feel it, hear it a little early. It's not it's not mm -hmm. anything magical. It's just I think it's just a gift. Right. So you could have guessed uh, and, and you were uh, guess isn't a good word, but you you were presuming that that Alanis Morissette would it would sound it would sound like that when you get full production into it and. We yeah, could see I, there I mean, was, there was something there with her. Yeah. I mean, yeah, in the raw. Mm -hmm. I mean, I you had a good raw. ear for seeing that a band was tight and they were mm -hmm. fighting with each other, you know, they, <laughs> but they had something there that could get better. Well, that's you, a, that's a know, good question, Jim. Too. So, so what about, what about that? How does that, uh, how does that guide you in your work? What if a band is fighting and, st and seems unstable and stuff? I mean, that, you, what do you, what do you take into consideration there? I mean, that wouldn't be a band you'd want to well, sign. I, yeah, well, do you, do, you, do you work through it if the musical... That's a band that you fire. <laughs> What's that? I had to do that. Uh -oh. that's, a, that's a band you put your blood and sweat into, and sweat equity is when you're not paid completely for the time and effort and energy you're putting into something. Yeah. And uh, you're hoping for the long term, you know, that it's mm -hmm. going to turn the curve. And all that you put into it, and you see things are building, 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 going the way you want to. And then they start to silly things like fighting and the money disappearing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. somebody having an ego. Yeah. Like leads, yeah. They get LSD. Mm -hmm. You know what that is? No. Well, I know Do you know what LSD is? It's lead singer disease. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. I knew she wasn't talking about the drug. Yeah. <laughs> lead singer disease. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't yeah, know it's what that's like. Just, it's just as damaging to your brain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so you have to yeah, that's kind of the uh the difficulty of of working your job when when the you got some some good musical talent, uh talent and songwriting and and playing together and then mm -hmm. some some things happen. Yeah, could be drugs, could be your LSD. <laughs> it's the worst thing ever because you're like putting everything into this, you know, you got all the pieces coming into place and yeah. you can never predict at what moment it's going to happen. But the sad thing is, is when it starts to happen, you see it like 100 miles down the road before anyone mm -hmm. else. Because, yeah. Yeah. well, I mean, the first time you might not. But after you've done it for a long time, like, I can mm -hmm. see where the misses are going to happen. Mm -hmm. I start to get like, not again. Cause and that could only lead so to the times. disaster and the band breaking up and not having a yeah. full Self, career. Like some bands, explosion. Like some yeah. bands that are still together, like. Like cheap trick, you know they, they. I assume they always got along together, and it's like a family, mm -hmm. and that's why they're still together. The, I think there's probably they have their moments too. Yeah, but yeah. I think there's some s sense of hey, we have to stick, and some stick it out, go through the bumps, and come back around. Yeah. But you know, it's you really. I mean, look, you know, Blink One Eighty Two. Uh, Tom left, you know, mm -hmm. you know it's just inevitable sometimes people have created differences and yeah. they need to split up and go do that you know but then mm -hmm. there's other times where they just do stupid stuff and blow, well, yeah. blow it drugs and alcohol don't help keep it together and attitude yeah i always tell this to the artists as an artist advocate you you know one of the biggest biggest most valuable assets you could have besides talent is coachability and being able to listen and get out of your own way I mean, I believe in artists being educated and they need to understand the business so they don't get ripped off. Right. But at the same time, I also know there's a certain line that shouldn't be drawn. Like, I'm not going to go up and sing for you. So mm -hmm. if I've been doing what I'm doing for a long time, if, some, if you've chosen me to work for you, you have to have faith in me that I'm yeah. telling you things you need to know so you're educated, but I'm also doing things that you're not capable of. Yeah. So... <laughs> Let me do my job. You do your job. 
and we're going to get to the finish line together. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's trust. I'm really yeah. hearing. I'm really hearing trust. Yeah, like they have to trust you for who you are, and vice versa. Yeah, you trust right. them that they're going to. I got to trust that they're going to yeah. do it. I yeah. mean, if I'm right. sticking my neck out, you know, I've been in this business for over 34 years. I've, I've made, you know, obviously it sounds like a lot. It's not because it's living, but over a million dollars in the music business, doing mm-hmm. the music business, sometimes mm-hmm. working for corporate and sometimes on my own. But the, the point at the end of the day, I've made over a dollar at this. I'm mm-hmm. not in the, yeah. I'm not in the red, you know, mm-hmm. I'm still here. Mm-hmm. I've been mentored by really great people in business. So I have all of their knowledge and experience and that's, that's invaluable. So if, if I know what I'm doing business wise and you're really good at singing and writing songs, right. then I, then we can do this together. Mm-hmm. Right. So you, you talked about trust and what I heard before that was, you know, I call it humility. You called about, uh, you called it openness and a learnability. What, what do you have to say about that? Because I know that there's a lot of people that can have skill, but don't have the, the ambition and the guts to go out and do it. I'm not a risk taker personally. And so I have some skill, but I don't have the guts that it takes or took, you know, to, <laughs> to, to, to go and do that. And so uh, what do you, do you have anything to say about all in the people that you've dealt with, the musicians that you've dealt with, bands or, or individuals in the bands? What's, what's your thought? Do you have any thoughts on that? What is it, what is it, what does it take to do what they are doing? What the musicians who are successful you know, you, you know, the skill, you have to, <laughs> you have to have the skill, you have to have the hard work, but what else do you say about the, uh, the egos versus the humility? Does that make any well, sense? <laughs> you got to lose the ego. Yes. The yeah. ego's got to go. I mean, that's probably going to be like a stick a fork and it. it's done. Mm-hmm. You know, that's usually the, the biggest enemy for an artist is the ego. But what, so, what I'm saying is the counter to that is you have to be strong enough to have the guts to believe in yourself and get up and do, yes. do, 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 yeah. be successful. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the motivation. Think, what, what else can I do better? What, what can I be doing more of? Mm-hmm. Who can I align myself with and what are they going to what are they going to teach me? And have faith in yourself that if someone, you know, you do, do your homework, you know, you do the background, you see the, what the person's done. And then you, at some point you have you have to trust. So you have to be practicing, uh, not give up, be mm-hmm. ready to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to put the work in. Be ready to fail a few times, you know, yeah. right. Not every. Not going to be like, you know, I always say it's the marathon. It's not the sprint. And mm-hmm. I also say when you're, when you do your homework, I mean, that's, I'm starting a, I'm going to start a class on A&R Girl Streamcast, which is going to be meet the, meet the masters. And we're going to talk, we're going to have classes. We're going to mm-hmm. talk to artists about these things that they need to know how to work and what to look for. I just took on a new client, Bob Green, and he's almost had, bricks and he's from florida he did his homework on me he read about me watched all my a and r girl youtubes and things Mm -hmm. like that and i taught he looked at and listened and he would see things that about what i told him that i was involved in and he he saw that it was true Mm -hmm. and so Mm -hmm. he had a gut instinct that he had to trust me because what what is he going to do to get out of florida we're working on his album together i just connected him with a producer I have him in the studio. He's, you know, he's self-funding because he knows if he has to believe himself first. And yeah, that's right, how right. he's going to expand yeah, right. his fan base. And that's what I was wondering. Some of the uh, the challenges that you have, you know, you've talked about. Is there some times where you need to guide or counsel some people? Like, because, you know, a good counselor asks questions and then listens and then responds. That's what a counselor does. And so... Do you say, uh, do you want to get out of Florida? Yes. <laughs> okay. What are you going to do? <laughs> what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you need to, what are you going to sacrifice to get out of Florida? You know, are you ready for the hard work? And what, you know, these kinds of questions, do you end up doing that kind of thing? Yeah, we, we talk about that. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and I explained to him though, once you're on board with me, you're not trying to do it anymore. That would be insulting mm-hmm. to me because I'm already doing it. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do for a living. Yeah, And I've been here for a long time. So for me to do the opportunity and for me to say, 
you know, look at my background of artists that I've thought should make it, and a lot of them did, then now it's time for you to take yourself serious too. And we're going to work on this journey together. And you're going to know that we're not, we're not going to have results overnight, but you have to understand now you are doing this. This is the music mm-hmm. business. That's probably the hardest thing sometimes for artists to go from being local to, oh, wow, I'm really doing this. This is, yeah. I didn't realize, because yeah. they have this MTV Cribs idea or, you know, <laughs> something else about it. You don't yeah. know what the music business is until you're there. And I'm like, well, yeah. I'm here. I've been doing this. So if you're working with me, you're doing it. You know. Yeah. This reminds me, uh, we have a saying in social work, and it's really simple. Don't work harder than your client. Oh, it's uh, very true. Yeah. So, you know, I'll say to my coworker, dude, what what are you what are you doing? Well, I want him to be successful and I want to Yeah, yeah, just just okay. And you said you said A, B, and C, and he's done none of that. So do you think he wants any of that? Well, I don't know. No, he doesn't. He you've been working with him for a year and he's not done any any towards the goals A, B, or C. You're working harder than he is. Stop working harder than your client. And, it's, and you know, we have to we have to counsel our, our, our co-workers like that. And that's kind of what I'm hearing you say, a little bit like that. You know, you, you're not going to work harder than the musicians. Who... I'm like, I'm like rolling my eyes going, yeah, how many times about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you experience a little bit of, of, it is kind of like that. It can be like that. It's a lot like that. It's time yeah. to part ways when you're feeling that way. It's time to part I mean, ways. Social work, what, I'm sure it's different in our business. It's like usually people providing the service, mm-hmm. but on my side, I fired artists before you're because done. no amount of money they're paying me is worth the headache. Sometimes you just, yeah. right. And you're looking ahead a year and three years and five, and you're saying, no, no, it's not going to happen. Right. Or it's probably not going to happen. You got to yeah. cut your losses because yeah. there could be somebody else out there who, you know, is willing to um, invest in themselves and work with you who right. will benefit from what you're doing. I mean, you're only as good as your last act. So mm-hmm. why am I going to, you know, you can't keep staying on something you know is not going anywhere. And they might expect you to be doing all the the brunt of the work and they kind of could even be giving up a little bit, you yeah. know, or expecting you to make miracles <laughs> happen when it, it's the both of you working together. Yeah. We're just guessing. Exactly. We, we, have, exactly. we haven't done this kind of work, but I, I would guess that too. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's like, you know, when you start seeing that they're not doing what you're telling them to do, you're mm-hmm. like, huh, okay. Because, I, and it's not my band. It's not my, I'm not the artist. I'm the person with the opportunities, you know, the know-how and the, mm-hmm. the connections. Mm-hmm. So yeah, You don't want to take big, on any big, more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any more children, you know, like I have, a, I have an yeah. 18 year old. You don't want another. And it's like the fourth time I've asked him to take the garbage out. You don't want, you don't want that. You know, I'm not asking you anymore. Oh, I've said that to my, I've said that to some people that bring me stuff. And I'll be like, uh, this person could be a handful. And like, well, what do you want to do? I'm like, I'd rather sit on the couch and play with my dog than work on, on something mm-hmm. that's going to give me a headache or, yeah. you know. not be it's not just about getting paid and and hired to do things it's about wanting to win myself still i still want to win every day right right i want to know that it's means something it's counting you know right right you want to make it a win-win of course yeah yeah i mean why would i want to work on a losing project Mm -hmm. (laughs) no exactly that's signing up for the losing team no you won't be on the yankees (laughs) (laughs) So, okay, so I'll, I'll sit, sit on the bench and, you know, be a minor league person, but I'm still on the Yankees and I'm going to get there. You know what I mean? It's like, you can tell I'm a Yankee mm-hmm. fan, right? <laughs> I'm a Phillies fan. So. Yeah, we can, we can no, still work together. somebody's got to do it. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Just kidding. <laughs> so you mentioned... I'm surprised, uh, though. Go ahead. I'm surprised you're a Philly fan. I mean, a lot of people I grew up with were Yankee fans. On that side of the no, river. ever since uh, even when I was, as long as I can remember, I liked the Phillies. My first, I collect okay. autographs. First autograph was okay. Bob Bob Boone. I was like twelve years old. Oh, nice. Yeah. I didn't even have. He was in Allentown somewhere at some card shop, and I remember my mom had this little. She had a pencil and a little notepad, <laughs> and I've lost the autograph since then. Oh, and it's gone. But I didn't man. even have a photo or anything. Oh, wow, wow. And then I'd go to the go to the uh, car shows in Allentown, and I like they used to have oh, cool. celebrities there. 
like Heather Locklear mm-hmm. was there, yeah, yeah. John Schneider. That one that I was there, yeah. And I was disappointed when they stopped doing the, maybe they still have the car mm-hmm. shows, but oh. they didn't have the celebrities. What did you think about Heather Locklear? <laughs> oh, I liked her. Yeah. I mean, was Back. she nice to you? Yeah, because this was when she was on... Um, Man, we were, was, uh, we were like 18 or something. I think it was TJ Hooker or something. We were that like 19. William Shatner. Was it, was it before, <laughs> I was think it was, before Dynasty? Yeah, this was... I think it was after high school. You might have been with me. No, I'm saying it was 18 or 19 or something like that. Yeah, I was with you. Yeah, yeah. It was what? I was like 19 okay, years okay. old. Yeah, I was young. <laughs> okay. That was a long time ago. Well, yeah. We have something else in common because I have her autograph too. Oh, no, okay. I, I met her when she, um, when she was with when she was with Tommy Lee when she was okay. with Motley um, when oh, Motley right. Crue played Allentown Fairgrounds or something. Oh, really? And yeah. we 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 were we went backstage to meet everybody, mm-hmm. and she was really nice. Yeah. I said, yeah. "Oh, forget about him. I don't want his autograph." I go, "I'm your <laughs> fan. I watch." I want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends went with him. me. They didn't care to meet her or get. An autograph. I was looking at the cars, honestly. I was, I, you know, I didn't want to wait yeah. in line, actually. I remember what it is. There was a line. I remember being, being line. nervous and it, you had to go up these stairs and it was up oh my on gosh. the stage. And, you know, she's sitting there. Like, yeah. But this was when oh I thought God. it was unique uh, in, in that she was on a current TV show at the time. And for me, that was cool because, you know, and there she is. And the same with John Schneider. <laughs> The Dukes yeah. of Hazard was on TV, <laughs> and Boss Hogg was there one one year. Oh my gosh! Year after. <laughs> yeah, so I was just at an autograph show. I go to yeah, like, you're going this coming weekend as well. Horror shows. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I met I met the girl that uh, was in the Runaways movie. She played Lita Ford. Oh yeah. 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 Her wow, name's Scout. Cool. Scout Taylor Compton. She was cool. Scout. Cool. Cool, cool. Well, speaking of speaking of the runaways, my current one of my other current projects, mm-hmm, Lacey mm-hmm. Younger, she's from San Diego. She just she just did a cover of 30 Days a Hole while mm-hmm. she was getting yeah. ready for her next single release. And she had Ronnie Lee play on there. Ronnie Lee wrote a lot of the song, okay. wrote one of the big songs for the runaways. So yeah, it all ties in. How yeah. do you there how you do you spell younger? Lacey Younger? <laughs> just younger with the ER, young with the ER at the end. Just younger, okay. Yeah, and we're releasing that. Um, the single's out already on all the digital platforms, but doing our first mm-hmm. e blast tomorrow to uh, AAA Radio mm-hmm. and uh, Americana. Always so, interested in new artists. Actually, that's what I was going to ask you about. But you know, if there was any yeah. new artists out there that you listen to, even ones you don't um, represent, but you know, anyone that you've come across in the last year or two that... Right, so we have Lacey it's hard Younger. to do that because I only have time for the ones I'm Oh, yeah, on. yeah. So you mentioned Lacey Younger, and then you mentioned uh, the guy from Florida. He's the Florida guy. What's, What's his Bob name? Bob Green. Bob Green. Bob Green. Okay. And is there extra and E on the end? he has a really cool song. Uh, no E that. on the end. Tell me about that song. Oh, really cool song. Oh, The Next Full Moon. That was great. So I did an A&R girl case um, with Reverb Nation, and a thousand submissions came in. And we narrowed it down to three, two girls, and uh, and then Bob. Mm-hmm. And we did a streamcast showcase because we were still in pandemic in June. Yeah. Somewhat. They weren't really mm-hmm. doing live stuff. So we decided to do this a streaming showcast. And I went down to Nashville with Malcolm Springer, who's a multi-platinum producer at the House of Blue Studios, Barry Hill. And then Kirsty Mana was the other judge. She's one of my dear friends. She wrote Austin for Blake Shelton. So mm-hmm. we were the judges, mm-hmm. and uh, we watched all three do a couple songs through the streaming from their homes, and we decided to pick Bob because mm-hmm. his voice was just unbelievable. Like, you couldn't say no to it. <laughs> and so then he sent me some songs, and the winner, the, so the winner of that showcase was going to get free A&R from myself mm-hmm. and a, a fully produced mm-hmm. track with Malcolm. Oh. with me oh that's and, a prize that's great and they had to get them they get themselves to nashville and we would do the track and the mm-hmm. you know cover the studio time and the production fee and whatnot and so he did the song full moon and it it he it came from showing me a youtube video of him doing it acoustically at his house uh-huh. and he gave me a couple songs to like five songs to choose from mm-hmm. and i love the story behind that song so during the pandemic there was nothing to do um, he's a bartender in the day at the mm-hmm. airport, so <laughs> was traveling really or anything. So he's sitting at home and he's watching all these TV shows and he loves like 
his his uh his wife and him are into kind of the goth stuff and mm-hmm. they like that uh tv show that Jar- josh harnett's in penny dreadful okay i haven't seen and that. so yeah i don't know if you know that one and yeah, so he watched it. a bunch of netflix and stuff and so it's you know it's where josh harnett is the main character and he turns into a werewolf and mm-hmm. you know he has a there's a female that he's interested in and that whole so we did, uh, we ended, he did the song. It's really catchy, really great. And then he just did his own video where he had prosthetic makeup done to turn him into a werewolf oh, wow. during the video. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, and they filmed it in St. Augustine, like by old gates and old buildings mm-hmm. in Florida. Yeah. We're going to release that... it on, on April 16th. Okay. It's I was a just full moon. That. It's called mm-hmm. a, it's a pink moon. And so mm-hmm. here's the here's what's cool about it is Bob is a surfer and he surfs at Cocoa Beach all the time. And so the pink moon represents red skies at night is a sailor's mm-hmm. delight. You know, the mm-hmm. next day the clear sky. Mm-hmm. So that, that's what we okay. came up with that. We're like, OK, we'll release it on the pink moon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> um, delight, not a sailor. Yeah, yeah, not sailor's delight. Surfer's delight. Is uh, Bob solo or is Bob with a band? Uh, does he play with the band? So, but he does both. He plays okay, solo, cool. and then he has a band called the, the Whiskey Conspiracy. Is and he, he has stuff already out. Is it you country music? Singer songwriter. Like a singer songwriter, but his production to it. His really cool backing vocals, and yeah, you know, the full band. So mm-hmm. okay. you know, some stuff's a little edgier, and then some stuff's more. You know, some people would say, "Is it country?" No, kind of Americana. It's kind okay. of country. It's kind of pop. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, we're definitely going to yeah, check it out. Yeah. I'm definitely going to listen to it and wait home. <laughs> yeah, uh, can I, yeah, can, yeah. If I can yeah. find it. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, uh, he has other, he already put out a couple records. So. Okay, great. On his own. Well, I think our listeners have learned a lot. We've learned from you tonight. We've learned some things about the music business because a lot mm-hmm. of times, you know, we're talking about uh, people who have reported on, people who have covered musicians about, you know, we've interviewed musicians. And so this is a, yeah, a first for mm-hmm. really getting into the music business, uh, yeah. I feel. So, oh, uh, yeah. And we, we and we, yeah. And uh, as far as musical styles, you know, we, over the last two years have really uh, gone a full range mm-hmm. <laughs> of all musical styles. And so uh, that's, that's yeah. cool too. I'm glad you really opened the different styles too. Oh, yeah. I mean, I didn't even mention to you guys, I've with Timbaland in the studio and mm-hmm. then the whole, you know, R&B and hip hop side of things, yeah. too. So Excellent. it's been great. I want to get I want to give one shout out to um, yes. mm-hmm. to a, um, a manager that I learned a lot from Lewis Levin. Uh, so I came from label side, but then I went into doing some artist management. And uh, if you look up Lewis Levin, I mean, he managed Michael Bolton for, for I don't know, 20 years or so. Yeah. But before that, he was on the road. He's worked with Kiss. He worked with Aerosmith. I mean, he worked with mm-hmm. the Giants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, but there's something to be said to have great mentors in the music because I still learn stuff every day. And I still have those people that if I can reach out and ask them something, what they think or what they would do. I call right. them up too. Yeah. So it's not like I know everything. I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> right. Get some advice and then make your own decisions and move forward. Yeah. And have you guys been to One Center Square yet? The Sandy Live Music? No. One Center Square. No. Have not. No? No. It's right in downtown Easton. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. In the square. It's no, like I was a shopping. under capacity. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. really? No, I was uh, now around the the circle, which is actually uh, could be a square. Uh, I was shopping during the holidays. So where where is this uh, in Easton, PA? Um, it's right on the on the corner across. Do you know where the Bayou is? I know the, the Bayou restaurant. in Bethlehem, uh, not in Easton. Okay, so there's a Bayou in, in the circle. Okay, but this is a, if you go back in the day, it's the Meyer old Meyer building. But so is it in the, is it in the uh, circle? Isn't that called Center Square? Yeah. It's okay. in the circle. Yeah. yeah, we used to go to Mother's. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> the okay, bar so it's the after hours club. It's on, the, it's on the southeast corner. Okay, okay, all right, yeah, good. So they have yeah. local so, local bands or bigger bands. Oh, they have national stuff. When I was managing Saliva, they were the first okay. national act they had huh. when they opened up as a. It used to be Drinkies. Okay, I remember that club. name. I remember that name. I don't yeah. know. If I yeah, I don't remember. Drinkies. And then they yeah. turned it into. 
Yeah, they turned it into a live venue. Okay. All right. That's good to know, especially the listeners that are local. So, yeah. yeah, we try to go to, well, be, before COVID, we went to a lot of concerts. Yeah, COVID's not going to I mean, happen. not a ton, but the one year I went to 15 concerts. Yeah. In the year. I mean, I own my own business, so I don't have, you know, yeah, a lot of time at. sometimes. But Yeah. And what's it? What's you should the, follow uh, them what, on, on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. What's the venue called again? One more time. It's called One Center, but it's spelled c-e-n-t-r-e mm -hmm. the british way mm -hmm. okay definitely check it out and they have all genres they have rap they have rock they had buck cherry there that was pretty oh, fun okay. i want to see i mean that, that band is amazing no, I do. <laughs> my friend who does the podcast with me when mike doesn't do mm -hmm. it with jeremy <laughs> his, his he's seen buck cherry like three or four times in the last couple of years he wow and I, I like the hard stuff. I like I like Frank Sinatra. I like like I like all genres. Full range. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks so. for telling us about that. That's awesome. Is that a place you you go to? Yeah. Maybe we'll run into you. <laughs> well, that's like my second home. That's what I'm okay. saying. If you ever wanted to do an in in person, you could set up mm -hmm. there. We could do it there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll the owners are really there. good friends of mine, and I think I think the world of them and their venue, mm -hmm. and it's a good thing to have locally. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, we don't Hi, have guys. anything like that, you know, yeah. in, in Washington or Hackettstown. Yeah, yeah we and, need more. And we uh, we go to yeah. Cellar, I mean, Cellarsville. Like Starland Theater. Well, the closest like small place. Oh, is, really? Is I've been down there. So right there. Yeah. Yeah, I've been there. I think that only seats like four hundred, or it, it's a really low number. Yeah. That that place seat. You know, I've seen the smithereens there, and. Yeah, you need to follow this one. It's close, a lot closer. And yeah. it's a lot more um, open standing room, and mm -hmm. they have two levels. Okay, that's good. So, yeah. yeah, it's Definitely a fun place. It so, for our listener, Holly's website is uh, it's a n the r the letters girl dot com. A n r girl dot com. Yes. So you can check out All Holly's right. website and the bands she represents. I think you have. Do you have a list of bands on there that? For people to check out or um just... not really because okay. not not all of them are signed to me you know okay. they're i'm hired to work with them so yeah, right okay. bob and i are just getting you know getting things lined up um lacy has her own label called a punch in a throat <laughs> <laughs> nice. so now if there's any bands out there that oh, need, yeah. need help they can contact you through there mm -hmm. well that's what the website is for they first have to submit their music and okay. I do an evaluation and mm -hmm. if I feel that there's something worthwhile or for their time and their money to 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 go the next step then yeah. I'll let them know and okay. then and then I can invite them to uh, do a paid consultation on the phone good so no, it's good great. to know how it works yeah a lot of people are not familiar with yeah. that so it's good to know <laughs> good to, it's what you've been doing but yeah, it's a I lot like of us to, yeah I like to do evaluation first because then I know, you know, where their skill levels at and I know where we can, where the conversation needs to start in their first 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Thank you. So it was yeah. great talking to you, Holly. Yeah. I mean, you could have come over here. You live in the East. Yeah, yeah. We've, uh, we, we've <laughs> done other country, other countries, other states, but uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is one we could have maybe uh, done. Yeah. yeah, anyway. So I don't, I don't, I don't leave much. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, bringing your expertise in the music business and bringing some things to light and uh, educating us and our listeners. And uh, yeah, it's just been great talking to you. Yes, it's been great talking to you guys too. See you. Stay in touch, guys. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank thanks, you. Thanks for your time. Today's interview was recorded on Zoom and at Did You Say Seven Studios in Washington, New Jersey. Go to the YouTube channel for exclusive video content. Intro and exit music by the band 99%. Today's show was produced and edited by Jim Thatcher. You can find Jim and Mike Talk Music on Apple Music, Spotify, Podbean, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Good night, everybody!